CBS Sports HQ heading to Steelers training camp. Head coach Mike Tomlin has gone 16 straight seasons without a losing record in Pittsburgh. That is the longest streak to start a head coaching career in NFL history. Now the AFC North, it's no easy feat with QBs like Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson to get through. The Steelers have the longest odds to win the division this season. Now Mike Tomlin caught up with our crew at training camp as he tries to keep that non-losing streak alive. Well, Coach, always appreciate the time, especially here in Latrobe. Uh, gorgeous day out here. You're 17 for you, and you would know better than anybody just what's required at this portion of the year to build the team you want. So what goes into it? You know, you got to have a hardcore plan while being light on your feet from an adjustment perspective. Um, we pour a lot of time in the, in the calendars and planning and uh, installation schedules and so forth. Um, but my experience tells me 17 years in, and I'm probably more flexible in these areas than I, were, than I was years ago, um, to have that plan, but be willing to adjust and adapt that plan based on what I'm seeing out there. The development of individuals and the collective has got to be a component uh, of this process. And you made the point at the start of camp that you're open to being surprised and also disappointed. I'm, I'm curious, look, small sample size, but what, is, what has stood out to you about the group that you're starting to build here? Man, I just think they're highly conditioned, um, you know, and I understand that that concept has changed over years. Guys come to camp in shape as opposed to coming to camp to get in shape. But even with that understanding, I think this group is uniquely conditioned and it allows us to work and uh, have player availability. And the more the guys are available individually and collectively, that gives them and us an opportunity to do what we came here to do. Understanding this roster turnover every year in this league, but at least on paper, you've got a lot of new pieces coming in that may play big roles. How do you bring this group together on an accelerated timeline to compete in what could be a really challenging division and obviously AFC as a whole? You know, a lot of the pieces that you speak of, we covered them in the draft, um, their intangible quality, the type of people that they are, and I think that that's going to be the catalyst for their infusion into us. Guys like Landon Roberts, man, I can remember myself and Kevin Colbert standing in the parking lot at the University of Houston and talking to him and his dad for an hour after pro day. And so this is more of a continuation or reintroduction of the relationship. And we know the type of guy he is and uh, how he loves football, and that's been on display here. And the same could be said about Keanu Neal and some of the others. Um, Allen Robinson, um, man, I remember being up at Penn State for his pro day and uh, really, really having an interest in him. And so that's how we play the free agency market. And, and so it's, a, it's not a get-to-know, if you will. Um, we, we already know some things about these guys, some intangible qualities that they have, what they might bring to us, how they might fit in, and, and so far it's proven to be true. So it's almost like they, they had a little stealer in them before they were even stealers. It is no question, man. <laughs> um, you know, Pat P, man, I think I probably, the first time I met him, he was like in 12th grade or something. <laughs> you know, uh, Brian McFadden uh, played for us, uh, was, his, was his older cousin at the time, and BMAC would be like, hey, Coach, you're going to know about my little cousin. You're going to know about my little cousin. Like, he forced Pat P on me. I had to know who he was. Only took 20 years to get yeah. him here. <laughs> and so, I know Pat P. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, one guy who's not a new face, but is obviously into a, thrust into a bigger role is, is Kenny Pickett. And I'm wondering the indicators you look for to know that he's progressing. You know, uh, I, I think, you know, a component of it is assuming that he that he is and has because he has experience this year that he didn't have a year ago. Um, he's got exposure. And so just going through this process of team development and readiness is different for him based on that experience. Um, he's more cognizant of things outside of himself. Mm -hmm. he's, he's more open to absorbing some of the unofficial responsibilities of the position of quarterback. Uh, as a rookie, man, this alignment, assignment, man, breaking the huddle, man, man knowing where your eligibles are, decision-making and things of that nature. And I just think with each passing day as he gains experience in the surface-level things that his job requires him to do, he's able to open himself up and make himself more available to some of the uh, deeper things, the deeper dives, or some of the unofficial things that comes with being who he is and the quarterback position he is. Last one for you. Knowing that the focus, especially in, in early August here, is about building this team and not worrying about the other teams you're going to face, but as you look at the AFC North and what it is year in and year out, it feels like it's as deep as it's been. And 
I'm wondering what type of team you think you need to bring to that division into the AFC to do the things, obviously, I'm sure you guys want to do. We better be a good football team. Um, and, and what I mean by that is if you look at our division, uh, the other teams have uh, outstanding quarterback play and commitments to those quarterbacks. And a lot of what they do is in and around those quarterbacks' talents. And we're in a different place. we got a young quarterback who's emerging. And so um, we better level the playing field by being good around him uh, relative to the others. And so when I say we better be a good team, that's what I mean. Um, we acknowledge that we got less experience at that position than those that we compete against. And so um, we don't expect him uh, to, to duel and beat those guys, uh, but we better beat those teams. And so uh, we better be um, well-rounded and we better have great depth and uh, we better be good in the line of scrimmages on both sides of the ball. Always love catching up. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. And getting a look at the most consecutive seasons without a losing record, the Steelers there coming in at 19, only behind the Cowboys, who are number one on the list with 21 from 65 to 85. Mike Tomlin trying to keep that streak alive for the upcoming season. And our CBS Sports HQ training camp tour continues. BMAC and Pat P, they're dropping a new episode of the All Things Covered podcast from Steelers camp. Also got the cards today. Next up, the Bengals and the Bucks, followed by the Dolphins and the Titans. And on August 6th, it is the Jets.